Good morning. Glad that you are able to be here and we're able to meet online. I do believe that the Lord is going to work it out that we'll be able to meet in person. So keep praying about that. Uh, but anyways, I'm <coughs> glad for the opportunity to be gathered together. And let's sing our first <coughs> song, excuse me, Have You Been to Jesus for the Cleansing Power? Jesus Christ, which cleanseth us from all sin. Let's open a word of prayer. <coughs> <coughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of meeting together. Thank you that we can sing praises to you. I pray you'd bless this service. <coughs> I pray, Lord, that the singing would bring honor and glory to you, that it would encourage and strengthen us. I pray, Lord, for the uh, Bible memorization, that you would help us to hide your word in our heart so we can live for you. We pray that you would uh, bless the uh, preaching. We think of Brother Jones and we ask your <clears throat> power upon him. I pray that he would, uh, uh, his preaching would touch our hearts and draw us closer to you and convict us and <clears throat> where you want us to change, to become more Christ-like. I pray you would use it mightily. I think of our country and I pray, Lord, that, uh, that you would take the COVID away very quickly. I pray, Lord, that for our frontline workers that you watch over them we think lord now of our country and, and the need of salvation and i pray lord that the, you would just do a great work and convict people of, of their need to be saved i pray lord now you bless all the service and i ask you in jesus christ's name amen <coughs> excuse me our next song is jesus keep me near the cross <laughs>
At this time, we're going to have Sam Sampson lead us in our uh, Bible memorization. Our theme for this year is Be Strong in the Grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the memory verse for the month of March is 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. So let's read that together for 10 times to see if we can memorize. 2 Peter 1, 2 Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. 2 Peter 1, 2 Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. 2 Peter 1, 2 Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. 2 Peter 1, 2 Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. 2 Peter 1, 2 Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. 2 Peter 1, 2 Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. 2 Peter 1, 2 Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. 2 Peter 1, 2 Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. 2 Peter 1, 2 Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Last time, let's see if we can say without looking at the screen. 2 Peter 1, 2 Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Sam. Our next song is Jesus my Lord will love me forever. this time, we're going to have Sam Sampson pray for us. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you once again for giving us the privilege to gather together in your precious name and bring honor and glory to your name, Lord. Father, we worship you. We magnify you, Lord. We lift up your name. We give you glory. Father, thank you, Lord, for what you have done on the cross of Calvary. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for giving your life, Lord. Thank you for um, drawing us close to you. Father, I pray at this time for Ireland. Father, we submit to uh, everyone that are living in Ireland, Lord, in your precious hand. Father, we ask your mercy, Lord. I pray, Father, that there would be a great awakening in these days. I pray, Father, that people would uh, uh, think of 
the Lord, what He has done on the cross of Calvary. I pray people would think of uh, eternity. Father, I pray that you draw everyone, Lord, and uh, men, women, and children uh, to come to the knowledge of salvation. Father, I pray at this time for the COVID situation. I pray, Father, you continue to watch over and, and heal our nation, Lord. I pray, Father, that there would be no more loss of life. Uh, people that are suffering from COVID um, would be uh, getting better and be able to get well, Lord. Father, I pray uh, for every frontline workers and the guardies and the firemen. I pray, Father, you continue to watch over them. I pray, Lord, uh, that you give us a peaceable uh, life in this nation. Uh, Father, I pray for our government, Lord. And I pray you give them wisdom and prudence, Lord, uh, to decide the right thing for every citizen in this country. Especially, Lord, I pray uh, that the, the church would be opened, Lord, um, very soon uh, for us to gather together and to worship you, um, uh, Lord, in service. Uh, so I pray, Father, that uh, you would help the government to see uh, the, need, the spiritual need uh, of the citizens, Lord. Uh, Father, I pray you make that happen. Uh, Lord, I pray at this time that you build our church, O Lord, um, uh, even we need you to build spiritually, Lord, uh, though that uh, we are not gathering together. I uh, pray, Father, you would do that. I also, Lord, uh, pray for everyone, every member of our church uh, to remain faithful. And when the church opens, Lord, I uh, pray that uh, we would all gather together to praise and worship your name. Uh, Father, uh, help us to be a true prayer warriors, uh, uh, to think of the souls that are perishing and to pray for them earnestly, Lord. Uh, we think of every souls, Lord, and uh, even for every member uh, that are joining these online services right now. Father, I pray that they would find blessing from the preaching of your word, uh, from the songs that we sing, and from uh, every part of the service, Lord. I pray you bless it, Lord. Uh, think of um, the orphanage that we support in Cambodia, Lord. I pray for every children and every staff over there. I pray, Father, you continue to watch over and meet their needs, O Lord. Uh, think of Brother Hale's family, Lord. Uh, uh, I pray you uh, bless his work, Lord, and uh, give him the health and strength, Lord, to continue to serve you and bring honor to your name, Lord. Uh, Father, finally, I pray for Brother Jones as he brings the brings your word, and I pray, Lord, you bless the preaching of your word, and um, let the word of you, Lord, reach to your heart and mind, Lord, and, and convict us and draw us close to you. And I pray, Lord, you bless, the, bless this time. In Jesus' name, I ask. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sam. Our last song before the announcements is Free from the Law, O Happy Condition.
Praise the Lord, Christ hath redeemed us once for all. Amen. At this time, we'll have the announcements. Announcements. Uh, we're very glad to have uh, Evangelist Bob Jones preach for us today. and uh, He's preached us for us a number of times and it's always been a blessing. Uh, so we're thankful for him. We will uh, take up an offering for him. As you know, uh, or maybe you don't know, evangelists uh, really rely upon their offerings to, to, to feed themselves. So uh, uh, if you would just put it into the church bank account and just put, put down uh, Bob Jones as a note and uh, whatever comes in in the next two weeks for him, we will send it to him. So please do that also. Uh, if you're doing a deposit for two things, can you make two separate deposits, please? The bank only gives me uh, very few uh, characters and sometimes I can't figure out what's what. So uh, if you have it for tithe, or, or you don't need to put anything, but if it's for missions, put missions, or if it's for Bob Jones, put Bob Jones. Uh, if you don't have the church um, bank details, uh, let me know and I can send them to you. Pray for our Facebook page and, and uh, please like it and share it and give it to others. Uh, don't forget services are still online Sunday morning 11 o'clock Sunday evening at 7 and midweek Bible study at 7 as well I encourage you to join that if you're a visitor watching online we're very glad to have you if you'd like to do a Bible study a one on one Bible study uh, be glad to do that with you just contact me also if you'd like a free Bible just let me know and the, the church will send you one free of charge no cost we'd be glad to do that for you if you have any prayer requests, uh, whether you're a visitor or a church member, if you have a prayer request you want me to be praying for, just send it to me and I'd be glad to do that for you. So at this time, we're gonna have uh, Brother Bob Jones preach for us. Brother Jones is an evangelist um, in his 80s and he's a real blessing. He lives in Tennessee, in Harrison, Tennessee. I have no idea where Harrison, Tennessee is, but uh, we're very glad to have him. So thank you, brother, and we look forward to hearing from you. Hello. Greetings to all my friends in Calvary Baptist Church at Cork, Ireland. It is wonderful. I tell you, wonderful to be able to speak to all of you uh, by way of Internet. I have really missed being with all of you uh, last year, but because of the pandemic, of course, it was impossible for us to have uh, the meeting. I miss being in Declan and Bethany's house and fellowshipping with them and Pastor Smith and all of you. It's just, uh, uh, I love you folks and miss you people. Wish we could be there even now, but I count it uh, an honor <clears throat> to uh, preach to you today. And uh, thank you again, Pastor Smith and church for working all of this out. And uh, we're, you are praying for revival all across the world. I have preacher friends and churches and folks that are asking God to have mercy on us and send us an old-fashioned, heaven-sent, prayed-down revival meeting. Oh, how we need that today. We need it in um, America so desperately. And, of course, we need it in Ireland and England and on and on we could go. And, and we're praying that maybe even this message and this, uh, I'll be preaching to you twice, Lord willing, uh, this message and then another one. And uh, we're praying that uh, something will be said, something will help you. Uh, first of all, I want to be an encouragement to you and an uplift and, uh, you know, during all of this pandemic and things that have happened and Ireland, of course, has been shut down and no po uh, no meeting uh, places and all of those can't meet. Uh, all of those things have been terrible uh, and it's discouraging and depressing and all of those things. So I, I want to be a, a help to you and I'm praying that I'll be an encouragement to you and through all of this. Uh, we're asking the Lord, if it please him, that, that he might just send us a good old-fashioned revival meeting. Amen. But today, I want to speak to you today from the Gospel of John, uh, reading chapter 14, a very familiar passage of scripture in John chapter 14 and beginning in verse 1. You remember this uh, story, John chapter 14, uh, the Gospel of John, and then uh, reading from verse 1. 
And, and it tells us this. It says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, you know. And the way, you know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. How can we know the way? And Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. That's a familiar passage of scripture. But I want to bring to your attention uh, verse 1. And the command from our Lord's lips. When he said, let not your heart be troubled. And so for the next few minutes, I want us to think about the subject. Why we should not have a troubled heart. Why we should not have a troubled heart. A lot of folks do, you know. So many people today, their hearts are troubled and their minds are confused and so many things happening and so many things going on around them. But you know, for a Christian, the Lord doesn't want us to have a troubled heart. Of course, we're concerned, but it's not to trouble us to the fact that you have a nervous breakdown or uh, all of these other things happen to you, but our faith, our trust is in the Lord. Let not your heart be troubled. Why should we not have a troubled heart? Now the disciples, the Lord has just now, they've had uh, uh, the uh, supper. The Lord's supper has been instituted. It's ended. And now they've left the upper room and they're walking toward the garden of Gethsemane. And a lot of things had happened that evening uh, that had discouraged uh, these disciples. It was revealed to them that one of them was going to betray our Lord. Uh, they had been told that all of them would desert uh, the Lord before tomorrow morning. And then Peter, Peter of all men, uh, had been told he would deny the Lord three times before the rooster crowed the next morning. And of course, the very fact uh, of Jesus' death was brought to their mind uh, several times during the evening. And so uh, they didn't seem to get it all. And uh, they were all troubled and they were upset and they were confused. And so as they walk along, our Lord gave a number of wonderful promises to calm their troubled nerves. And here in John chapter 14, I, I don't know, there's several, uh, several reasons why we should not have a troubled heart. They gave, the Lord gave as they walked along. I, th I don't know exactly how many, but tonight, or today, whatever, I'm going to give you four reasons why we should not have a troubled heart. Taken right from the Gospel of John, chapter 14. First of all, number one, why should we not have a troubled heart? Because of our belief in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The Lord said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And so the question is, are you believing in trusting in Jesus Christ? He's the only way, you know, belief and trusting in him. Isn't it wonderful to become a Christian, to, to be able to say, I know the Lord as my Savior, to be able to say, I know I'm going to heaven when I die. Isn't it wonderful that you, all you have to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your own personal savior. You know, in my mind, I go way back uh, to the day that I was saved. I have been a Christian now for almost 72 years. April 20th, 1949, the Lord Jesus came into my heart and saved my soul. I mean, it's real. It's just as real as if it happened right today. I could take you to the very place where Jesus came into my heart and saved my soul. And all because he died on that cross. He was buried. He rose again. And then he said, if you'll believe in me, you'll have eternal everlasting life. Oh, the day. 
The day that Jesus came into my heart, oh, the peace that it brought, oh, the joy that it brought, and knowing my sins were forgiven, knowing that I didn't have to worry about going to hell anymore, knowing that now I, I could rest assured uh, that I was bound for glory land. And you know why? Belief in Jesus Christ. You know, you don't become a Christian by uh, turning over a new leaf. You don't become a Christian by being baptized. You don't become a Christian by uh, making vows and all of those things. Ah, but the Lord has a way. And his way is to go to heaven. Jesus said, you believe in God, believe also in me. Oh, friend, you'll be in trouble today. If you don't have your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, who else, who else could you trust? Who in the world? Could you believe in and trust in to help you and to encourage you and to uh, give you peace? Who? Tell me who could give you that? No one but our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, it's wonderful today that we can put our faith and trust in him. Be sure. Oh, let's be sure today. We're believing in Jesus Christ. Oh, let's be sure uh, that we've trusted him and him alone as our own personal Savior. Let not your heart be troubled. Why not? Are you believing in Jesus? Trusting in Him? Christ, the real Son of God? Uh, God the Son? The one who gave His life on Calvary? Oh, He's the creator of the earth. Uh, he's the creator of the sea. He's creator of the universe and the trillions and trillions and billions and on and on we go of stars. He's the one that lived the perfect life. He's the one, when it was time, laid down his life freely and paid for our sins. He died. He was buried. He arose again for our sins. And you see, friends, belief in Jesus Christ. You won't have a troubled heart. Uh, during this pandemic, during all the <clears throat> troubles and trials that come with it, you know what? You have a peace in your heart when you're trusting in Jesus. There's something about believing and trusting in Him. Oh, I ask you today, are you believing in Christ? You believe also in me, Jesus said. You believe in God? Well, just about everybody, somebody said, believes in God. But what about Christ? He's the one that died. He's the one that gave His life. He's the Savior. Believe and trusting in Him. Let not your heart be troubled. Why? You believe in God believe also in me. But number two, why should we not have a troubled heart? Not only because of belief in Christ, but number two, because of the beautiful home in heaven. Notice it says in verse two, the Lord said, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I go to prepare a place for you. Isn't that wonderful? The Lord Jesus Christ, uh, he is in heaven uh, he's gone to prepare a place for you and me. Where? In heaven, in the Father's house. And you know something, beloved? We're going to dwell in that house forever and forever and forever. Oh, won't it be wonderful? We'll never have to move again. Once, <laughs> once we set foot on that heavenly soil, we'll never have to move again. Our home, eternal is waiting for us. And you know, friends, as we think about that home, <coughs> as we think about what the Lord has prepared, working, uh, building for us in heaven right now, oh, it's better than anything you could ever imagine. You can think of any mansion on the face of the earth. Oh, there's a lot of them. There's many big, big mansions uh, and big, big uh, uh uh, family rooms and all of those things. And, I, you know, I've been in a lot of nice homes. My, as I go back through my ministry, thinking about uh, being an evangelist all these years and preaching all over the world. And I, I, I've been privileged to stay in a lot of nice homes. I've also been privileged to stay in some not so nice homes. Uh, wasn't too good. But, you know, uh, who cares? Uh, my, my desire was to preach. Uh, it doesn't matter where you keep me, as long as you'll let me preach. That's what God's called me to do, and that's what I want to do. But, you know, I was thinking about uh, nice homes and beautiful places. 
and trying to imagine uh, what is this that the Lord has prepared for us there in heaven. And uh, it's so wonderful to think about that home. It's so wonderful to think about uh, that heavenly mansion. Uh, you know, we'll live there. We'll live there forever. What kind of place is it, do you think? Well, uh, there's a lot of things that will uh, be there in heaven. And there's some things that will not be in heaven that will be a blessing. For instance, uh, uh, there are seven things that will not be in heaven. First, in Revelation 21, verse 1, the Bible tells us there's no more sea in heaven. Wonder why? Wonder why there's no more sea in heaven. I have no idea. Uh, I, I don't really know. But you know what? Uh, one thing we could we can we can think on, and that is uh, when you get saved, uh, when you believe in Jesus Christ, trust Him as your Savior. The Bible tells us that He takes our sins and He casts them into the deepest sea never to be remembered against us anymore. The book of Micah, chapter 7 uh, and verse um, uh, 19 tells us that he does away with our sins and puts them into the deepest sea. Well, if all of our sins have been cast into the, the sea, certainly there's not going to be a sea in heaven, right? Because there's no sin in heaven. Well, that's just Jones' theology. I'm not sure <laughs> about all of that. But you know one thing? No more sea. So that'll be a wonderful place, won't it? Heaven, no more sea. And then secondly, there's no more sorrow. Uh, we read in Revelation 21 and in verse 4, uh, there'll be nothing there to make us uh, sad. Uh, there'll be nothing there uh, that will give you a broken heart. There's no more sorrow. Think about living in a land forever. No more sorrow. And not only that, number three, in that same verse, verse 4, Revelation 21, there's no more crying. Isn't that wonderful? No one will ever cry again. You'll never have to weep to be in. There'll be nothing to weep about except joy and happiness forever and forever and forever. And then, number four, there's no more pain. Isn't that wonderful to know? There's no more pain. Oh, pain is everywhere. Uh, I remember um, a couple of years ago uh, when I was with... Uh, uh, Brother Declan and Bethany. And uh, Brother Declan had a terrible back. Oh, it's awful pain. Oh, I felt so sorry for him with the pain that he had. Uh, and you know, uh, there's lots of folks that have pain today. But one day, if you're saved, if you have Jesus in your heart, the Lord says, I've got a place I'm preparing for you, and there'll be no more pain in that place. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, to be in heaven, no more pain. Why should we have a troubled heart if we're going to such a wonderful place? A place where there's no sea, there's no sorrow, there's no crying, there's no pain. And get this, Revelation 21 and verse 4 tells us also there's no more death. No death. No death. No more dying. Uh, death is uh, uh, after us all. Death is after you. Death is after me. Uh, all around us, people are dying constantly. Uh, constantly, people are dying. And so death, death is, death is an enemy. Death is terrible. We don't like to think about it. We don't want to uh, go where it is. I told somebody one time, if I knew where I was going to die... I would never go near the place. Amen. No, sir. Uh, but, you know, we don't know that. And we know one thing. It's appointed unto man wants to die. Ah, but when we get to heaven, we'll never have to worry. Never have to worry anymore about death. Death is stalks you and me. Death is after us all. Little, big, old, young. It makes no difference. No respecter. Oh, but not in heaven. No more death. Aren't you glad you're headed for heaven? Why should we have a troubled heart? Because we're headed for such a wonderful place. And then the Bible tells us, number six, uh, Revelation 22 and verse three tells us there's no more curse. No curse. Isn't that something? We'll be in a land. The earth is cursed here by sin and, and wickedness and godly ungodliness and all that goes on. Ah, but not in heaven. No, uh, the, curse is, the earth is cursed, but not in heaven. No more curse in that wonderful land. 
And then there's something else. Last of all, there's no more night. Revelation 22 verse 5 tells us Jesus is the light. And he'll shine and we won't need the sun. We won't need the moon. We won't need any light because Jesus is a light. There's a land that is fairer than day. And by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there. Yes, in that sweet by and by. You know, friends, we live in the nasty now and now, but someday we'll be in that sweet by and by. That beautiful home, that place that Jesus is preparing for us even now. Uh, while I'm speaking to you, that mansion is being fixed up and taken care of. And soon it will be ready. And soon the Lord will say, come on in. Come on in. Welcome. This is your place. Uh, you'll live here forever and forever and forever. How beautiful. How beautiful this place must be. Why should we have a troubled heart when we're headed to such a beautiful home in heaven? I love the old song. I used to sing it. How beautiful heaven must be, sweet home of the happy and free, fair haven of rest for the weary. How beautiful heaven must be. And so our Lord said, don't have a troubled heart. Why not? Because you believe in God, you believe in me. I'm the way. Believe me. Trust me. And then he said, don't have a troubled heart because of that beautiful home in heaven that I'm preparing for you. I'm getting it ready. The mansion is almost done. And one day, welcome home. Welcome home, Bob. It's been waiting for you. Here it is. And you know, I, I can just imagine in my mind one of these days. In fact, not long ago, my wife and I, uh, well, uh, we were in the Chicago, Chicago, Illinois, big, big airport. And uh, we were waiting for somebody to come and pick us up down, you know, as you go out the luggage uh, department and so on. We're standing there and there were cars going by and there was limousines, you know, big stretch limousines coming by and picking people up. And there was movie stars and all big, big place, you know, a lot of fancy folks and, and all of them uh, getting rides and so on. So I said to my wife, I said, you know, uh, Sue, I've got one of those, uh, uh, I've got one of those stretch machines coming after me one of these days, those beautiful uh, stretch cars, they call them. She said, you do? When? I said, uh, when I take my last breath, the Lord's going to send down that, that chariot, that stretch chariot, and he's going to pull up in front of me and those angels are going to say, get on board, Bob, time to go home. And I'll sit down and they'll sweep me into glory land. And you know, the first person I will see when I get to glory land, you know, it'll be. Yes, it'll be my heavenly father, the Lord Jesus Christ, my savior. He'll be standing there waiting for me. And he'll say, Bob, come on in. Welcome home. We've been waiting for you, Bob. Everything's ready. Here's. Here's all these people uh, that have been waiting for you to come home. There's your mother. And there's your dad. There's your sister. There's your uncles, your aunts. Many of them you have uh, uh, won to the Lord. And, and they're all here, Bob. Come on in. And there will be my Savior. You know, I have never seen Jesus. I preach about him every day. I, I talk to him every day. I, I read from his word. He talks to me. But I've never seen him personally, face to face. But one day, <laughs> oh, one day, I'll see him face to face. Isn't that a wonderful thought? Why should I have a troubled heart? I mean, I'm headed for a beautiful home. I'm headed for heaven, glory land. But something else, why should we not have a troubled heart? Not only because of our belief in Christ, not only because of that beautiful home, but also because of the second coming. The second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 3, the Lord said, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you 
unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Oh, isn't that amazing? Uh, the Lord is coming back. And he's coming after me. As well as all of his saints that have trusted him as their own Savior. You know, friends, that's our hope today. In the midst of this pandemic. In the midst of all the sorrow. In the midst of all the trouble. In the midst of all the anxiety over elections and, uh, and uh, votings. And things of all of those things that have happened. In the midst of all of that. Oh, what joy as we look for that hope. And that hope is the Lord's going to come and take us out of this world. That's a sure hope. Uh, a hope that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. Aren't you glad we've got that hope today? Aren't you glad uh, that we have a sure hope? Uh, a place where we'll live uh, forever and forever. And he's coming after us. We call that the second coming of Jesus Christ. We call that when that trump of God sounds and that archangel shouts according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13 through 18. According to that, uh, the dead in Christ, when that trumpet blows, uh, all of those who died from the time of Adam up until that moment have, that have trusted the Lord and died and gone back to the grave, they're going to come forth. And then not only are they going to come forth, but all of those who are saved that are alive living here on this earth, when Jesus comes back, he'll take us. And so he's coming back after all saved people. And he's going to take us right in to that new Jerusalem, that heavenly place, uh, that heavenly home, uh, that home where Jesus is. Uh, and we'll be there. All living sa saints will be there. And the Lord God will take care of us and he'll take us out of this world. That's our hope. Do you have that hope today? That's a wonderful hope, isn't it? A hope. It's not like I, I hope it rains tomorrow or I hope it, uh, uh, the sun shines tomorrow. No, this hope that we have is a sure hope. We're not hoping, guessing, thinking, maybe, or all of that. Oh, we know. I, I, I thank God we know today whom we have believed in. And we know that it's a sure hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, so many folks, they don't have hope. So many people have no hope whatsoever here in this life. Don't you feel sorry for them? I, I look at folks as I, uh, I'm out in the, in the shopping places and all of those things. And I see their faces. And you know, they look, they, they look so sad. My heart goes out to so many people today. A couple of years ago, maybe three now, my grandson, Rob, uh, he... Uh, he feels uh, God has called him to preach. And then, not too long ago, he surrendered to be a missionary. And so one day he came to me and said, Grandpa, I said, uh, how do missionaries live? And I said, I'll tell you what, save your money and you can go with me and we'll go to Ireland and I'll introduce you to several missionaries and I'll show you how they live. So he did. And so for the last three weeks, I was in Ireland uh, two or three years ago. My grandson flew over and met me, uh, and we, uh, he was in Ireland with me for the last three weeks I was there, and we went around, traveled around all over uh, the part of Ireland, and we were there with diff different missionaries, and, and my grandson was interested, and he would ask them questions, and uh, why are you here, what brought you here, what did this, and so one day we were down in Waterford, Waterford, Ireland, uh, with Brother Don Thatcher, missionary there, and so uh, well, we enjoyed that and had a wonderful trip and had a wonderful time with him. And my grandson was talking. And one day he asked uh, Brother Thatcher, he said, Brother Thatcher, tell me, why did you leave your beautiful home in Flint, Michigan, and bring your five children and come all the way over here to this place in Ireland, here in Waterford, and so many of the folks don't want you. They don't like you. They don't like what you speak, what you say. They don't want you here. Why, why would you do that? Why would you leave all of that and come here for these folks? Brother Thatcher said to my grandson, he said, uh, tomorrow morning, I'll answer that question. So the next morning we got up and Brother Thatcher said, now, but Rob, I want you and your grandfather to go downtown Waterford. I'll take you. And I want you to stand on the street corner. Don't pass out tracks. Don't do anything. I just want you to stand there. And I want you to watch the people who go by. And he said, there'll be thousands. It's a very, very busy 
an intersection. And there'll be people passing back. He said, I just want you to watch those folks. So we did. Next morning, we went down, stood on the corner, and sure enough, there was a, a different ones who passed by. Uh, there was a, over on the side, uh, there was a, a man who had passed out. He had overdrugged. Uh, over here on this side was a woman laying in the ditch uh, there, and she uh, was vomiting. She was an alcoholic. And so we watched all these people. And then when we finished, the, Brother Thatcher, the missionary, came and said, Now follow me. And we went down the street about a block to a Catholic church. It was 10 o'clock, and they were getting ready to have morning mass. And so we went inside, and he said, Now I just want you to stand here, and I want you to watch, and just look at the people as they come in. And so we did. And sure enough, there we were in this uh, beautiful cathedral. I think the ceiling looked like it was gold. Uh, the the, 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 the uh, ra uh, rails and all looked like they were gold coated and the floor and all is so oh beautiful unbelievable beautiful and all of that so uh the people came in and they actually filled uh, the auditorium big big church big catholic church they filled the auditorium and then uh, uh at, at the right time then the priest came out and he was swaying around and uh had his uh, gown and he was flowing his gown around and he had this uh, uh looked like a salt shaker in his hand and he was going around and he was shaking and shaking and shaking and shaking. And uh, uh, I don't know what he had in it, but evidently it was something to uh, scare away the evil spirits, whatever it may be. And then this uh, priest, he went through some kind of a jingle, jangle. I don't know. I, you couldn't understand his words. Uh, it sounded, uh, you know, spooky, really weird uh, as he w uh, spoke and all of these things. And then finally he read a couple of verses from the Bible, made no sense whatsoever. Uh, he never was able to tie it in. And, and so uh, there he was. And then dismissed the people. So missionary Thatcher said to my grandson, he said, now, Rob, I want you to tell me, uh, you stood there on the corner for almost an hour and you watched those people go by. What did you see? And my grandson Rob said to Brother Thatcher, he said, I saw some of the saddest people I've ever seen in my life. He said they were so sad. And Brother Thatcher said, yes. And then You've seen the service that went on here today. Nothing was said about sin. Nothing was said about the punishment of sin in hell. Nothing was said about how to go to heaven. Nothing was said about Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Master. Nothing was said about eternal life in Christ forever and forever. Brother Thatcher said, now Rob, Without my church, without the church that we have here, uh, he said, look, they have no hope. This town has no hope. They have no one to tell them about the Lord. We're the only hope they have. Anchor Baptist Church, Waterford, Ireland. He said, without us, there's no one to give that wonderful story of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're the only hope. That's the reason I came here, is because these folks have no hope. And you know that's so true across our land. So many people have no hope. Oh, but you and I, our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. Amen. Are you leaning on Him today? Are you trusting in Him? The Lord doesn't want us to have a troubled heart. Let not your heart be troubled. Why not? Last of all, the last reason here he gives in this passage of scripture why we should not ha have a troubled heart is in verse uh, 4. And he said, And whither I go, you know, and the way you know. You know why we should not have a troubled heart today? Because, listen, we know the way to heaven. Isn't that wonderful to know right now? We know the way to heaven. And Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. In other words, the only way you can go to heaven is through 
the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't go to heaven uh, by being a, a member of a church. You don't go to heaven by being baptized. You don't go to heaven by, uh, by living a good life. You don't go to heaven because you uh, have made some creed or signed some list or something along that line. You go to heaven by your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And you know, friends, we have a sure hope, as I said a while ago. I'm not thinking. I'm not hoping. I'm not guessing. It's not maybe, brother. I know whom I have believed in. And I'm persuaded he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. No man can go to heaven except through Jesus Christ. How do you do that? How do you go to heaven? What did I do back there in April 20th, 1949 in that little basement church? What did I do? First of all, I realized I was a sinner. See, to go to heaven, you've got to first realize you're a sinner. And I realized that day, I was only nine years old, but I realized that day that, you know, I had never, I had, uh, I had told, I hadn't told the truth every time I, I had lied on, on some occasions. I, I, I realized that day that I disobeyed my parents. I realized that day that I'd taken some things that didn't belong to me. I realized that day I'd said some words I shouldn't have said. I realized that day that I was a sinner. And if, uh, and I would never go to heaven with sin in my life to go to heaven. I realized as a little boy that day that to go to heaven, I had to be perfect. And I wasn't perfect. I was a sinner. And so first of all, I realized I was a sinner. And then I realized that the wages of sin is death. I knew that day, if I died like that, I'd have to pay for my sins. And that would be in death, eternal death, in hell, forever and forever and forever, in a lake of fire, uh, being tormented day and night, forever and forever. That's the wrath of God as he pours that out upon sinners who die without Jesus Christ as their Savior. So I had to realize, I realized that day I was a sinner. I realized that day that I'd be paying for my sins forever and ever in a lake of fire. And then I realized that day that uh, Jesus was the way. I realized that day, uh, Romans chapter 8 says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Isn't that wonderful, friends, to know today that while we were yet sinners, Christ took care of our sins. He paid for our sins. He's the way. John three sixteen. For God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish. But have everlasting life. Yes. Yes. I realized that day I was a sinner. Yes. I realized that day. Uh, that I, I would be uh, paying for my sins forever. In a lake of fire. Uh, in hell. And then I realized that day. The wonderful news. That's the reason Jesus came into the world. That's the reason he gave his life on Calvary. So that I could have eternal life. And then the fourth thing I realized. That if I'd put my trust in him. He would save me. Romans 10 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. And believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. In other words you believe that Jesus died. That he was buried and God raised him from the dead. You're trusting in him. A living savior. Alive forever. You're trusting in him. He'll save you. Trusting in him. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Wouldn't you like to have that day? Wouldn't you like to have that right now, that eternal life? By believing and trusting in Jesus Christ. Realize you're a sinner. Realize wages of sin is death. You'll go to hell, pay for those sins forever. And then realize that's the reason Jesus came into the world, to pay for our sins. And then you realize, how do you get it? By believing and trusting in Jesus Christ. And then the Bible says in Romans uh, chapter 10 in verse 13 says, uh, uh, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Would you like to do that right now, right here? As you've listened to this sermon, wouldn't you like to just bow your heads right now and ask Jesus to come into your heart, save your soul, take you to heaven when you die, believing, trusting in him. Remember, that's the way, the truth, the life. Christ is that way. Let's bow our heads. And with our heads bowed and eyes closed, right this moment, oh, as the Holy Spirit deals with you, 
Jesus doesn't want us to have a troubled heart. The way you don't have a troubled heart is, first of all, uh, we realize that uh, uh, we're trusting and believing in Jesus Christ. And then we realize that uh, uh, the, the, the Lord Jesus has prepared a home in heaven for all of those who will trust in him as Savior. And then we realize that uh, the Lord is coming back and he's going to get us and take us to heaven, that wonderful, beautiful place. And then we realize we know the way. Isn't it wonderful to know we know the way to heaven today? Oh, there's millions and millions and millions have no idea whatsoever how to go to heaven. But you do. You know the way right now. And that's the Bible way. That's the way that Jesus said. And I'll tell you what, it'll do away with all the troubled hearts. If you'll right this moment, receive Jesus, trust him, him alone as your Savior. Would you do that? Oh, Lord, I pray you'll bless. I pray you'll speak to hearts. Someone somewhere may be listening by our internet or whatever. May this be the hour. They'll turn from their sins and put their faith and trust in Christ. Bless, I tell you, I pray, Lord. Bless the message now and speak to hearts. Thank you again in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Oh, friends, hasn't it been wonderful? Aren't you glad we had this privilege to be together? Well, God bless you. And thank you, Pastor Smith. And thank you for Calvary Baptist Church, this wonderful church I love so dearly, and all you people. And I pray for you daily. God bless you. And until we meet again, God bless.